I went to Alaska and all I got was this moose. I went to the Metropolitan Club and all I got was this Metropolitan. <laughs> hey, Jay. Jay, I'm going to tell you a secret, Jay. That one time when I farted on your head, it wasn't a fart. I shat on your head, Jay. And that, that is why you smell like a dirty diaper all the time. I gifted you with the scent of a thousand ass bogs that was given to me by a wise old owl in a swamp next to the Garden of Nim. Oh, hey, Jay. Oh, hey. Are you recording? No. Testicle, testicle, one, two, five. I th- <laughs> you should see a doctor. You mean they're not all lumpy? <laughs> you That's mean, what I call my left testicles. You mean people don't, don't have five? A le- they're, well, one lump is more like, there's two, but one is lumpy enough for five. You oh. know what would be awful is if this ages poorly and I get testicle cancer uh. and I die of testicle cancer. <laughs> I want you to know future me. It was worth the joke. <laughs> Wild horses coming to take my balls away. Aww, that was actually sweet. Wow, wow, horses. <coughs> Freshly shorn testicles today. You know, you know what's weird is when you go into surgery and you come out with your balls shaved and you're like, I had nothing going on with my balls. Why did they change my balls? <laughs> um, I'm, that's actually a, a fairly decent point because, yeah, that's happened. Like on areas that shouldn't have had my yeah. balls touched. I'll just get like a random shaved area. I'm like, I appreciate the offer. Thank I mean, you. Obviously, they wanted to like they wanted to stick tape somewhere. Oh, dude, when you get like a catheter. Oh, Dude. oh my God! This episode started great. I know. So I, I, I had my, uh, oh. in in 2020, I ended up having my appendix removed. I know it's like 40. I'm in my 40s, and I had my appendix removed. Wow. By the way, I love you. I love you, Heather, my beautiful wife. If she was not around, I would have been dead. So I got like I got this pain, and it felt like man, I have got to poop like crazy. Like what is going on? And I, I am not pushing this turd. So I did what any sane 40-year-old man would do. I drank a whole pot of coffee. There we go. It's like, that'll show that turd. <laughs> and it just didn't come out. I was just like really awake and uncomfortable. And uh, she came home. And I stayed home because I, I wasn't feeling well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she came home. And I kind of told her where the pain was and how in pain I was. And she looked it up and she goes, Where's the pain at? You know, I described where it was. She goes, everything is kind of saying it's your appendix. Did you want to go to the doctor? Like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I should be fine. Like, no, we're going. Oh, good for her, man. And then, yeah, when we went in there, and like by then the pain wasn't really hurting as much. And they kind of sat me down, and I was in the emergency room, and they, they kind of like pushed on the spot, and it, oh my god, it hurt so bad. And they're like, yep, that's your appendix. And then they did all these, like things and they're like yeah this was about to burst oh my god oh my god you should be in awful pain right now and i was like i was in awful pain now i'm not anymore (laughs) but yeah they they ended up i went into surgery and uh when they take when they took the catheter out dude it was like they were it was like they were starting a lawnmower heather (laughs) heather said that she had never heard anybody make that sound before what oh man like blood curdling yell like Tuscan Raider. I had two people holding me up, and then one person yanking that thing out. Oh, oh man, it was awful. When, when was this? It was like right at the start of COVID. Right, oh, right before yes, COVID. Yes, 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 yes. Right yes, before yes. COVID, because I got COVID in 2019, mm. and then I I ended up reading somewhere that like they said that like COVID could possibly 
like do something like there was people who were having their appendixes removed after getting COVID. I'd have to follow up on that though. I don't know if that's a hundred percent. Oh, I remember you saying something about this. Uh, yeah, because we weren't allowed to come in and see you in the hospital. No, people people came in. I remember this we, was right we, before COVID. We went to Sherman. This was right before it was, COVID. It, 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 Nick it, and Bella saw me. It was Sherman. I vaguely remember Nick and Bella being there. No, uh, you were there. You were there because you snuck me in chicken. That's right. Oh, yeah. my God, that's right. You snuck me chicken in. And I, I, I remember I was, dude, I barely remember you being there. Yes. Oh, God, you have a good I memory because so I, I told Andy about that. I'm like, we, we have to stop. <laughs> I was so, I thought it was hilarious. I was like, I said, I was like, I, I was going in and out the whole time. Um, but I do remember seeing that and like thinking like, this is really, this, is, this, this means a lot. <laughs> so my, my thanks to you. Thank you for stealing me chicken that I had absolutely no way of eating. Did you eat it? Because I know when, when, you I, brought it to me? when I brought it to you, you could not eat it. Uh, I was 16 so I, years old. So I, ate I had it for my you. gallbladder taken out. And uh, that wasn't the problem. The problem was they cut my liver and I bled out and died. And that's why I was in the hospital so long. So uh, you came to see me. And that's why I was like so pale and I was so like sickly you looking. Look so bad. Yeah, that's what everyone says. Like I don't have any photos or anything. Um, but I, my, the happiest, at, John, no shit, the happiest I was is when you came in and pulled chicken out of your pocket and it had lint on it. Oh, it did. It was in my Letterman's jacket. <laughs> I was like, he'll, he'll be fine. And that he was, it, it was hands down like the, the, the happiest moment. And I remember like screaming inside. Like in my head, I was like, "Don't laugh, because it's going to hurt so <laughs> bad." Um, no, but like that—that that was life all, all, all altering that moment. And, <laughs> that yeah. was... I mean, seriously, seriously, like, like I, I, I appreciated jokingly, you but... returning the, the the favor. That was that was a that was a joke that was well over twenty years. <laughs> <in America. laughs> just just waiting for it. Yep, I got your extra crispy right here. So you're gonna be in the you're gonna be in the hospital, huh? <laughs> I, I want you to know. I want you to know that if I die mm. and I take all my stuff and throw it in the garbage, <laughs> let's, by the way, the last episode ended dark as fuck. <laughs> when they take all my stuff and throw it in the garbage, I'm in the casket. Mm. If you slid a little piece of chicken into my coat pocket, yeah, I might come alive and eat it. Do you have a pre- preference, like uh, churches or? No, in, in all honesty, I I want to be buried upside down and have a tree coming. And out a tree growing out of your ass. Yeah. I oh, just I'm think, super well aware. I am. <laughs> I think that would be hilarious. But do you, I, do you have I, a tree preference? You know what? That kind of makes all the difference. What would be? I think like a weeping willow is probably like the funniest <laughs> tree to come out of your sad ass. Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to be buried in like water. You have to be buried worse. in water. It'd be like a bog. <laughs> like, that's a bog ass willow tree. <laughs> Come on. I just think it'd be so funny. Not a sequoia. That if people were just like. You see that proud tree? Mm. That's coming out of that dude's ass. Yeah. Now I, I told and, I and told Heather really, and really quiet nights, you can still hear that tree fart. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know what? I, I think what's the tree that has the little spilly co- spinny copters? Oh, I I mean, you could ask me a thought. You could tell me a thousand trees. I wouldn't know, but I know exactly what you're, everyone knows what, what what you're talking about. I, it would be that one. I want that one. Just to piss everybody off forever. I just want the little spinny copters. Yeah. Just yeah. want you to know that that's. That spinning copter came out of my ass. Ass cop- copters. Yep, that's the ass copter tree. I think that I, I think truly it's beautiful. And I cut you off. What did Heather say? Oh, I no, I told her I was like, it doesn't have to be coming directly out of my <laughs> ass, babe. I just want you to know, I don't want to be stuffed full of chemicals. Yeah, right. I want there to be a tree involved. But maybe I'm, I'm letting the cat out of the bag. I want you to tell everybody that tree is coming out of my <laughs> ass. <laughs> I mean, th- I mean, there's, there's, there's got to be a plaque. If she doesn't, yeah, okay, there we go. At the very least, <laughs> the very here least. lies the tree coming out of this man's ass. I'll, I'll even draw a little diagram. Oh, and John, to be honest, if there's no art on that plaque, I would be upset. Oh man, it's gonna be the most beautiful tree coming out of an ass. And there's got to be braille, just to know that one day, one person who can't see it <laughs> will be laughing so hard. <laughs> And no one will know why. Oh, that would be that would be amazing if it if it like just says like 
the something's in memory of, and it yeah. just says at the bottom in Braille, it says is coming out of this yeah, guy's and, ass. And, and like no one, like it doesn't say it in like English. It says it in Braille only. Ah, uh, yeah. So like everyone's really sad, and then just was one blind guy is just cracking up at yep. a funeral. I'm I'm totally cool with that. <laughs> I'm totally totally fine with that. I think you and I have always been about the the long game joke, the long game like how is this going to make that one person laugh oh dude i mean basically we're doing an entire podcast for like six people so i want the bump <laughs> the bump set spike yeah okay if i can if i can figure out how to make one guy laugh 60 years from now that's right achieved well, that's like the joke we used to do in high school all the time we used to do jokes back and forth you, you know you I, I, every everyone did that everyone sat in in a party and a table and whatever is we, we we we'd have jokes and we've talked about this before on the on the other podcast, but uh, I mean, I, at that point in time, I think everyone has jokes armed and ready to go. You know, everyone has like two or three jokes. And the old, old older you get, you stop having jokes. You just have stories. Yes. And uh, John and I had a a bump set spike joke, where we would set up we 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 bump the joke, the beginning of the joke. It didn't have an end, and John and I would both laugh. And then we go on to the next joke, <laughs> and people would be like, "What? What the fuck? Oh, okay, what? Whatever. What, what's, what's the next joke?" And then, like, two or three minutes later, we do the the set joke, the bump set, and then that one didn't really have an ending, but it did. It had like a kind of like a a, a cap to the first joke, and you're like, "Oh, is is that what you made me do? That was funny." And then, like, you know, ten minutes later, then you do the spike joke, <laughs> and it's it's a really dumb joke until the end, and then it's extra dumb because it makes you feel stupid for having sat through 20 minutes of jokes it all just starts to get with, to that shit. There's a superhero in the middle of a field. Yeah, He says, see that brick? I can throw that brick up in the air, and it'll never come down. Oh, yeah? Show me. Ah! So how are you doing today, man? I'm doing good. Yeah? What what'd you do this weekend? Uh, so Bella's... Bella's... Uh, uh, Party for her 18th birthday happened on Friday. Yeah, dude, that was that was a couple of days ago. That feels so. I know, long ago. I know. That's crazy. Bella's 18 years old. I remember her being a tiny little Bella. Right. And now she's a grown up 18 year old Bella. Dude, like uh, literally, like looking through those photos there, like I, I think you were in her life epically more than I, 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 I was. You know, you're Uncle John. Um. But like looking through those photos, I remember like I remember seeing her as a little girl. I remember her being this little girl. And then like I remember her coming over to our house once and I was like, Whoa, you're like ten. Mm -hmm. You're huge. And then like the last time I saw her was at your Thanksgiving party. And she came in and she was like fifteen or sixteen, and I'm like, what the fuck happened? Like that was weird. That was super weird to like that much time had gone by and I saw this like little person become an actual human, you know? Yeah, I, I just I think I think for everybody with with the COVID stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. Like everybody just kind of lost about it 3 years. Uh, it, it, it's 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 a weird it's 3 like it, years too. It's like uh it's like the blip from the Marvel yeah. universe, the MCU. And I think like a, a lot a lot of people talk about it they're like, "Well, we didn't get to go out." I'm like, "That's not the point." The point is like literally those 3 years feel weird. They feel like uh, 6 months and 10 years at the same time. Yeah, it's just it's, I, it was I can't one tell time. It was like one overlapping year. Yeah. It was really bizarre and like I I'm still doing like well shit, did I shoot that one video in like in 2020 or was that 2022? Like I don't even think about the middle year. I'm like, "Oh fuck, there's a year in between that." Mm -hmm. It's it, it was just a weird time frame, man. I don't, I don't know, but but I don't I don't give a fuck about that. I what I give a fuck about is is seeing this kid like become an adult. And that's so cool. You know, like, I don't have kids. And Andy and I aren't going to have kids. So it gives me a little pang of, like, like ha happiness when I see my friend's kids grow up. Like, I love seeing Bob's kid. Do you feel and, guilty not having kids? No, no. I did it at first. There, there, there were there's probably a couple, couple years in there. I was like, you know, like, oh, I should have a kid. I should be a dad, you know. But, like, basically, I'd like to say I, ca I came to grips with it, but it, that, that's not it is I don't want to have children. I don't think I would be a good father for a lot of reasons, but 
I think, uh, most importantly, I think I'm too selfish. Whether that's my choosing or not, it's, I think I would not be good with kids, but like, I love my niece and nephew. I love my God kids, but I feel like a shit because every time I re reach out to them, it's like, obviously, like, you know, they don't want to talk to an adult and that, that's cool. I understand that. But it's like, then I lose that time period. Then I lose like years and then we talk and then it's like, well, cool. What have you been up to? You're a kid. You know, and like, I, I, but I want to know. I want to like be in their lives. I want to know, but I feel like I'm a burden most of the time. So, like, you shouldn't. You're a cool dude. Well, like, people would, people care. I don't know. You it, know, if you, I don't know, if you make, I don't know, if making time is, making time is hard. Yeah. Well, and, and then I'm, I'm not blaming anyone. I'm not, I'm not, and I'm, if anything, I'm blaming myself because making time is goddamn near impossible. But at the same time, that's going to bring us into tonight's topic. <laughs> uh, do you want to dive into this or let's talk about Bella a little bit? Because I think that kid is fucking awesome and I like where she's going. She is awesome. And she's, she's going to, I guess the story now, she's going to go on COD. Yeah. She's going to try and go to COD. And then. And she said she's doing photography as a minor. Oh. I thought, it, well, I, I thought that was the point. It was getting into photography. I don't know. She's young. I'm, I mean, I, truth, truth be told, I may have misheard her, but she did make it sound like she's going to do it as a minor. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. I am, I am correct. She is doing it as a minor with a major in uh, graphic design. Yes. Okay. That, that does yes. sound about right. So uh, it, it, when we talked, she found she's, she's way more in interested in doing um, editing than the actual f f f photography itself. And then when I got into the photography, she's really interested in doing like event photography, which, you know, all of that leads to, hey, hey, hey I know someone right up your alley. If this is what you actually want to do and you want to like actually be a part of this and eventually get paid to do this kind of stuff, this is, I mean, one, the money's there, man. The money's there and constantly there. And the more flexible you are and the more you can do shit. Are you talking, this is for event photography? Yeah, yeah. So what's the difference between e event photography and other types of photography? Well, I mean, you, you have like stuff like studio photography where you do like product shots or like model shots and things like that. In, in, in studio photography, you have ultimate control over everything. You have control over the lighting. You have control over the environment. You have control over the background about how they're posed, what they're posed, what they're doing. You have control over everything, right? Nothing happens by chance in event photography you're there to capture the moment that you have really no effect over there might be times in the day where you get people to look at you pose thumbs up whatever but really event photography is you're finding the story that's happening and you're capturing the emotion whatever that emotion is in that moment in time so who hires an event photographer usually the people throwing the event I mean, it depends on the event, too. If, if it's like a corporate event, that's different than like a wedding or a birthday party. You know, a birthday party and a wedding is probably the people throwing the party, i.e. the couple or the parents or whoever's throwing the party for the birthday. If it's a corporate, usually it's like the marketing department. OK. Well, what about the. I. I would be really worried about getting into. Uh a graphic design right now just because of because of AI. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of worries. There's a ton of worries about AI right now. And I, I just did a whole show on, on that about my concerns and actually like my positives, like where, where I, where I think the field can go as a positive. Uh, at the end of the day, I don't think art is going to, I don't think AI is going to get rid of humans for graphic design. I think AI is going to be a good step stool tool for humans, for designers. But when it comes down to it, AI can only do so much. And it really only depends on what you tell it to do. You know, like we do AI for our show graphics, but I don't have a ton of control over that. If, if, if I were to go to a business and the business were to say, hey, we need you to follow our branding, because when you go to a business, they, you know, they, they've, they've done the leg legwork. You know, they have their branding Bible, and the branding Bible breaks down to like what fonts you can use, how you can use the fonts, the sizes you can use, the colors, when you can use the colors, when you can use shapes, how do you use all this stuff. And the deeper they have of that branding Bible, 
the more cohesive everything they create looks to the point where you don't need to release the logo on shit anymore. You don't need to pound into the head like, this is Coca-Cola. It's like you can just literally look at the red Pantone and go, oh, this is Coke. Like literally, they own a Pantone. They're one of the very, very few companies that have bought a color. Yeah, but I mean, don't they have like 100 years of, yeah, of they, stuff they, behind it? They like, do. It's not something that's just going to happen overnight. No. But like to get your foot in the door now, like why would the new Coca, the new company, the new Coke, like why would hire they, someone? Why would they, when they have no money, hire somebody mm. when they... I guess I'm more worried about the people that don't know what good and mm. bad design is just doing their own stuff. So that's where it comes down to everyone, I think... I, I think now, in the market of anything art, you can no longer just do art. You also have to be a salesman. Um, how that salesman is, like how you portray that salesman... Dif differs from what, however you're appro approaching it. Um, but I think you need to be able to say, hey, I'm making this art, and here's why I am important to this. This isn't just a piece of art. This is from me. So if you want, you, if you want this quality, if you want this type of mindset, guess what? I know what and why and how and when everything about this piece of art will affect your audience. Yeah, but what if they don't give a shit? That's true. They might, might, might not. And granted, a lot of people won't. A lot of people will look at the dollar, the, the, the dollar sign, the bottom thing. Uh, for instance, we just pitched a company here in El El Elgin. We did a beautiful, beautiful proposal. It was gorgeous, man. And we designed, they wanted like 18 different videos made, okay? And we scripted out 10 of them. Like, not like scripted out perfectly, but like, here's the gist j j of everything. And it's like, for the uh, rest of them, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to bring the same energy to all of these. And we sent it to them. We pitched it. It was, it was great. It was, it, it's honestly some of my, my, my best like, creative content ideas. And we never heard back from them. And then we heard them like a month later, and they're like, oh, we need another round of bids. Uh, we're only looking for four videos but we need to stay around this price range. And I'm like, well, okay, that price range is nothing near what we were pitching because we were pitching something really creative. What it made, they made it sound like they just wanted something, uh, uh, they just wanted a video to tell people what they're doing. And I pitched it to them and I never heard back from them. So it's just like a lot of people won't care about the theory. They won't care about the critical analysis. They won't care about the whys and the hows and all this other shit, the psychology, the, the, everything that goes into making art. But some people will. And you keep hunting and keep doing and keep doing. Like in the art world, as you know, the worst thing you can do is stop. The worst thing you can do is go, I'm done. I'm pissed off. I can't get better. You keep doing it. Whether you get in the job or not, well, my, here the, the reason why I think all this is because my industry's already been pillaged. There was architects used to, you know, find the land, mm. you know, have a vision for what it could be, get people to buy in, um, design this, you know, a piece of art right. or something, and then they would sell it off, and they would used to, and they used to make a lot of money mm -hmm. doing it, mm -hmm. but. Over the years, uh, the way that things have gone is they've now, you know, they no longer find the land. They have developers mm. do it. Um, the, the developers get other investors. Uh, the owner, who the thing is usually for, just goes to the lowest bidder. The contractor now is in charge of the construction and has butted, it has butt the architect out. Um, and then even the design of it has been cut up into partial of the services now you have to have to pay a structural engineer you have to pay a mechanical engineer you have to pay an electrical engineer okay. you have to pay a plumbing yeah. engineer you have to play a technology specialist you have to pay a fire prote protection specialist and now the architect is just kind of has a couple things that they have going on for them as an industry mm. and you know it's because I don't know. I mean, it just kind of happened over time because people just said, like, why? Why am I going to pay this guy? And I just kind of see. 
I don't know, like when I hear like, well, we'll, it'll never happen because I'm the expert and this is what I can do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I'm just over here with a decimated, the decimated profession that I'm in and just say, that's cool. I, uh, my profession is 2000 years old. Yeah. Or thousands of years old. Yeah. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been gut pretty bad over the course of just the past not even a century yet. So you think it's like like a thousand years? A thousand years that this? I mean, I'm sorry, not a thousand, eight, a hundred, hundred years that you think this has been like whittled down? Yeah, the architects kind of lost a lot of their power. I want to say in the like sometime between the forties and now. Okay. Okay. So, and a lot of it has to do with, you know, nobody. People care more about the bottom line. Yeah, yeah. And well, they don't, and, and they don't, and they don't care about design. Now, the people who, you know, you, when you said, well, you just got to find the people who do do care. Mm-hmm. What ended up happening with us is there's like, there's about a dozen architects on the planet that get like the real choice stuff. Oh, right. For the people who can afford it. Right. Well, right. And everybody right. else, you're just gonna do, you know. I mean, not to say that not everybody. I mean, there's there's multiple levels of mm. it, but like the real high design stuff that like changes the world yeah. type of stuff. Yeah. I mean, you're not. Well, I mean, let, you're let's not gonna be able honest. To get that. How, you're not going to get a Coca Cola. It, well, it, it, that's exactly it. Is like how many? You know, everyone goes to film school to want want to be a director, right? How many people come out actually being directors? Like maybe one out of a hundred. You know, like most people go into the film industry as grips, DPs, editors, fucking set, set designers, everything else. There, there, there's, there's so many other. But like I think that film, film feels so much more accessible than a lot of things because it is such a new medium. It is a new medium, true. And you can tell a really compelling story with not a lot. And the irony of that is the movie industry as a whole. Not just like movies, but like video industry as in as a totality is mostly based on either entertainment or uh, making money. <laughs> like when it comes down to it, it's like are, are 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 you advertising? Are you educating? Are you selling a product? Are you making a movie for entertainment value to make me money? And that's what it boils down to. Is and I think that's why. Is how how are your investors going to get the money? How back? are your investors going to get the money? Yes. Yeah. And like, if you don't have investors, then you're not going to make money. It's very difficult. And now, when you think of it like an architectural standpoint, your investors are the are the project owners. They're 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 the ones who want to they're have not. the project done. No, you're going to have people like. You know, the reason why like a lot of our our housing looks exactly the same Mm. is because there's been like a process on like, you know, we're going to get this land. We could build it into the side of this mountain. We could make it look Mm. this certain Mm. way. We Mm. could do a lot of things. But the investors would say, why did you do that? I'm investing this money. You're going to use, you know, this isn't 100 percent across the board, but it's most, you know, they're investing their money for a reason and they want a return on it. And they don't want you spending their money willy nilly for no reason. Correct. They want a return. Yeah. Um, so I mean, like maybe maybe the big thing is is you know how do you find the the daring investors is really the thing on what you're supposed to be looking for. I don't think it's just about daring investors though. I I think it's being able to sell to people. But why why would somebody care? Why would somebody care when the, if like if I'm investing a dollar mm. and you say I'm going to do something that's going to be amazing and new? Yep. And you say and I'm only and I'm going to give you uh one dollar back mm. and but somebody else could do it completely affordable and give five dollars back to yep. the dollar. Who cares what your dream is? But it all depends on who is talking to that other person. Nah. <laughs> That's not the real world. I, I I think it absolutely is. That's not the real world. Absolutely. I think if if someone were to come to you and say, uh, John, give me a hundred dollars. Um, I'm gonna do this awesome creative thing. Yeah, but they don't care. Like, and I will give if you. You're an investor. On, if you're on, an investor, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, all right, I'm sorry. Keep going. And you get, I'm gonna do this awesome awesome thing, and you're gonna get your hundred dollars back. Okay. Person two comes in and says. Hey, I'm gonna do this. You give me hundred dollars. I'm gonna do this thing that is proven time and time again to make you five hundred dollars in, in in return. 
Then you get a third person to come in. The third person comes to your house. He sits, sits you down. He brings you your favorite beer. You guys sit and talk. He's actually a veteran. You guys reminisce. You talk. He understands who you are, not as a seller, not as a buyer, not as a person who has the money. But he understands your core values. He understands what you want. And a good salesperson does not sell the product. They sell the person. So they get to know you. You get to know him. You guys actually become friends. He pitches you an idea. He says, John, if you were to give me $100, I'm going to use this $100 to do something that I have passion for. And not only that, something I see as the next step that people are not getting ready to see yet. But when it hits, it'll rocket off and become the next thing. If this hits, I can make you tenfold day one. That's then I would say that's some nice swamp land that you're selling. There, you might be, John. You might be because you got to remember everybody's saying that. That's but, how they're getting their foot in the door, and now everybody's words they don't mean anything. Sometimes they don't. No. Sometimes no. They do. I'm, I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna go with how nature operates. Okay. There's, there's an eighty twenty split. It's real hard. I mean, eighty percent of it is gonna be crap. It's, it's not going to come to fruition. Okay. But 20% will. Yeah. All right. All right. That, that, that's fair. And that's, and, I, and, you know, and of that 20%, only 20% of that is really going to be great. Uh, okay. Okay. I mean, I, t- to be honest, I think you're pretty gentle with your numbers. I, w- I would probably go lower. But, yes, I see your point. So, I mean, it's, you know, do you, do you get the easy, the easy money? Yeah, I know I'm going to get my money back on this. It's a safe return. Mm-hmm. And I understand there's high risk, high, re- high return. But like who, again, now who, who can afford that? Coca-Cola can afford that. Or someone who shares a passion, shares a dream. Yeah, but the, there's passionate reason- people doesn't mean that they have money in their pocket. Ah, but there's a reason Kickstarter is so fucking huge. Kickstarter is a sad thing that only exists because the medical industry doesn't uh, work in this country. And people have to do Kickstarter to, you know, pay for their medical bills. <laughs> no, you're wrong, wrong, wrong thing. You're thinking GoFundMe. Oh, GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine every oh artist and creative you know, listening to that last know, statement going, what the fuck? What, what is he talking about? <laughs> you know what? I mean, we, we're not far from Running Man. We're, we're Think about it. Close Think to about yes. it. We yeah. are so close to Running Man, but yeah. you're not like... You're not running a, from a Samoan hockey player. You're, you're not running from like some black dude yeah. with a with a flamethrower. You're like you are singing and dancing on a platform that people look at on a tiny screen on their hand. Yeah. So your medical bills won't ruin your family. Yeah. It is, and it's it's worse than Running Man. And and I'm sorry, it's worse. There's nothing because in Running Man, you're only ruining your own life. Yes. Ru- in America. <laughs> It takes out everybody. But, I mean, you can go way bigger than that with what's actually happening right now. It's not about the athleticism of running through a neotopia fucking landscape. A light bulb. A Christmas tree. (laughs) The worst thing that can happen is happening right now because insurance companies own everything. And insurance is some of the biggest fucking scams there is. The fucking government doesn't give a shit about humanity most of the time. They're bailing out airlines i'm sorry there's no fucking reason you should bail out an airline that doesn't give a shit about the people they're servicing in, in any way insurance companies like if, if 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 you were to watch a commercial and a big giant guido looking motherfucker comes on the screen and just looks into the camera and says it'd be a real shame if your wife got into an accident wouldn't it and then it said prudential you wouldn't bat a fucking eye You'd be like, yeah, okay, yeah, I, that's pretty on par. Yeah. Yeah, everything's, it's, it's pretty brutal right now. Yeah. So I, it's really hard to convince somebody yeah. that you're going to pick the right color yeah. for their company when an AI can do it for them. Really? They come full circle on yeah. this whole yeah. conversation. Go ahead. Where everything is so crap right now. Yeah. Like if this was the 1960s when Europe is on fire yeah. and everything else is ruined and you're the only game in town. And the people 
who are pushing buttons on an elevator can mm-hmm. put their kids through college. People had the spare money then, yeah, yeah. to to pay. Like when when we had a a, a burgeoning middle class, mm. we don't now. Correct, cor- correct, correct, correct. So it's just it's really, <laughs> and like AI on top of all this, of you know of people in the creative career fields. Mm. It's, I it seems looming and awful. It can, but here here's the issue. It's fucking here. Whether you want it to or not, whether uh, 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 Congress enacts a law, it's still going to be here. It's still going to be here. It, there is no turning back. We are in a landscape right now that, A, has never been done before, and B, we have to become a symbiotic relationship. Otherwise, you get left behind and you become a cog in a machine. You are no longer... Yeah, but we're already cogs in a machine. Like, how well, are we going to... at a grand fucking philosophical level yes of course but if you want to be an artist in any kind of artistic field you and i are you and i are lucky enough that we actually get to do i do i, I love, love my job yes. i love where i work yes i do get to design really like cool civic spaces yeah. for for cities for towns yeah and i love it and and it's awesome but like that's because my client is a city mm-hmm. you know and they there's Money has been pooled together to make it happen. So you don't, you don't, you don't think a city could have the idea of saying, why are we paying these guys to do this when we can just run, run it through a robot? I think um, if, if legislation can go through that people can poison the water and still make and be you know <laughs> yeah and yes. you could you could destroy the epa which has already happened it was the very first thing that trump did when he went no into power shit. was to, to gut the epa yeah that shocked me you know like we we, we want to shit in the water because we we can make an extra make dollar, dollar. Yes. i don't see them batting an eye on putting legislation forward that would allow them to make more money at the use of ai at yes. the expense of others so here's the thing it's going to happen that what you just said is the rough side of the fucking coin is it's going to happen it will so the people who attach themselves to AI, the people who use ai the people who can become you can so use, are, are you a tool. Are, are you saying that there's like a the very first time that i met you yeah like when we became really good friends you had just come off of a a a, a really bad uh, head-on collision with another guy because you were on one side of a wrestling mat and they oh are on God. the other side of a wrestling mat and you have to get the towel in the middle yeah. to win. Yeah. And you got your head bashed in yeah. doing it. I remember. Well, Are you trying parts. to say that AI is the towel in the... Uh, yeah, parts. I like that. <laughs> AI is the towel in the middle that we have to get? Because if you think about it, it's like you have you have billions of people... Who will who can slowly traverse their way across that wrestling mat to get the towel? Yeah, and then you have like five guys with rocket ships. Okay, who do you think is going to get to that towel first? Who's who's going to end up with the Bastion head? Probably me again. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm really slow. I, I, I can't help it. Um, but I, 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 who has the rocket ship? Is, is, is that I don't know. The people? guy's flying into outer space with rocket ships. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Marmaduke versus Spaceman. You don't Spiff. know who's going to get the towel. Like the the world is burning right now, and there's guys <laughs> flying into outer space and looking for parking spots on Mars right now. Oh, that's oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's Those guys. True. Yeah, I mean, yes, I think they they will, but I think how you use what is being available until until they pay a congressman to change the legislation so it's no longer in your favor that's 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 always the case that is not on the table it can't be because that's the end all conversation killer any fucking thing like that i mean let's talk about gay rights let's talk about like 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 marriage rights like literally the moment you take that off 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 the table then it's a no fucking win situation and you just lost so as soon as you go up to that level the fucking conversation's over at that at that point so no, oh, that like, I'm not saying don't have hope. I'm just saying the last fighting, 20 minutes would say otherwise. I'm just saying it's it's futile. It's I don't think it's futile. I think I think you should. It's have futile hope. until 
when this has happened for the history, yeah. people will eventually just rise up and slaughter everybody yes. else. Yes. And then we live in our dystopian novel and like all the people who lived in who are like, you know, the guys who've been saving their cans of, of beets. I told you so. I got my MREs over here. All right. So in that scenario, are you talking about the singularity? Oh, like, <laughs> are you talking about like Skynet? No, I'm not talking about Skynet. Yeah. No. I mean, it's singular- no. I'm talking about is much, no, 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 much, no, much more. No, I don't. I don't think that AI. I don't think AI is going to be. Um, I think even when the singularity is going to happen, with I mean, and I guess. I'd, and who knows if it's ever going to happen? And by anybody who doesn't know, just in case there's somebody who's not in Los Dudes, I was going to say the, the five people singularity would yeah. be when AI actually really does come online because everybody's calling it AI, but it's not really AI. Well, I mean, it 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 it, it is. It's it's thinking. It out, is outside. an intelligence, but it's not. It is. It is not. A, it's not a cognitive. It is not a self-aware. Yeah, it's not self-aware. That's what the singularity is. I don't know if that is going to be. Like if it's self aware, I like what is it gonna be able to do if it's in a controlled system? How would it be in a controlled system if it's self aware? I mean if it's in a on a computer terminal all itself and it's not on a network. No way. There's no such thing. I'm sorry. You 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 can tell me this all 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 day that there's a bunker somewhere out there that just has well, like this. what is this gonna take? Like it, it takes it for us to happen, it took twelve billion years. It'll take about Four or five seconds for for a computer to go AI. Yes, or for like the singularity to happen. Yes, and the singularity is not and it's not fucking Terminator. Okay? It's, it's a self aware. It could thing. go we've, like, that way. We've technically created a a mental life. Yes, I don't know if thereby uh, disproving <sighs> God. It depends Sorry. on what your definition. Well, okay, so okay, here's and here's. All right, where's my soapbox? There it is. <laughs> All right, now that I'm on it. Come on, sea monkeys. So I there was a I was raised Catholic and was religious. Mm. Went to war, mm. you know. Screw you because my god is better than your god. That's Got out of the military. You know, things didn't really go my way. Got very angry, yeah. blamed a lot of others, watched Fox News because it told me what was right, what was wrong. I went to school, got upset that a lot of the things I was told weren't true. And then, like, as that happened, I was pushed probably t- towards an atheism. Yeah. And then an odd thing happened that the more I learned, the more I realized that atheism is a... You have to be just as... There's so much unknown that being atheist and saying, well, there's absolutely no such thing as uh, God, like, then it seems silly. Then, like, it almost seems to the point that, like, okay, let's redefine what God is. I think God, God is in nature. God is an 80 20 split. God is, is the repeating things that we see in nature. Mm. God is gravity. God is the thing that's creating the explosions in the sky. It is a, it is a, this, an unknown, incredibly powerful entity that has created everything. It's not a person. It doesn't care if you jerk off. It doesn't care if you eat selfish. It doesn't care if you like to wear a dress. If you think that that's what your God is, you have a small God. Yeah. You have a puny, sad God. Back, <clears throat> back when they had biblical times... They used to fight, and they would carry their god into the battlefield. And mm-hmm. when you won, you took their god. Mm-hmm. You brought it back to your place and say, because you could say, our god's better than your god. Right, we right. have your god just to show you how, how bad it is. Yeah. If that's what you think, if you think all this stuff, like kneeling on a football field, if you think who somebody marries, if you think what people are learning, if that... If that's what you think that your God is, you have a small God, and it's in my house, and it's puny because it's living in my God's house. You have a small God. I'm writing that down because that we might have just got the show note. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but that's... Let me get off this soapbox. <laughs> that, I mean, that that was actually beautiful. Like, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut, cut that out and pray someone um, animates that. 
Okay. Because that was beautiful. <laughs> okay. I just, it's, I, I mean, it's just, I, it's, what were we talking about before this? Before I got on my soapbox, my angry soapbox of what God was and God wasn't. Oh, we, oh, we were talking AI about. AI and singularity. Oh, AI and singularity. Yeah. So I do think you wouldn't be disproving God. Mm. I think it was the inevitable thing that happened because the universe was set in motion and we are stars that have become cognizant of ourselves. Correct. And I, I don't say that we disprove God from my own language. I say that from uh, doctrine upon doctrine of other people saying that. Like, that's what everyone thinks the singularity is going to be is, uh, uh, yay, it's Terminator, but we have also disproved God because we have become God. It's like, calm down. There's, you know, you created a fucking video game. Good for you. Yeah. I don't know. I, I and, and I see the singularity as something that is going to be uh, not so science fiction-y. I think we're going to create something that is first is going to fear and then next will hate. So you think it's going to be science fiction-y? I do. I think okay. I think it will first fear and it'll hate. D- and, and but I and, and I don't but I don't think it'll be powerful. I mean it's going to be a it doesn't know what it is. It's a it's a child being born. Yeah, at 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 first, but the idea of the singularity is or any kind of AI is once it understands what it is, it can replicate itself. It can clone itself infinitely. It is not a one and done thing. I mean, you can do this as the lowest common denominator and say Age of Ultron, where it's like all the robots became self aware, blah, blah. That's not the fucking point. It's scarier. Yeah, but no, but it's going to blow itself out because Moore's Law, Moore's Law states that, you know, you can have a certain amount of c- computing power based off of how thin we can get gold. And Moore's Law tops out at one layer. Uh, mm-hmm. One atom thick of gold. Okay, so what if look at a uh, uh, Bobaverse, uh-huh. where uh, a computer program that's basically AI. You're taking a human brain and coding it, right? You are, but I don't think this is the same thing. This is this but, was they they replicated a brain, yes, and yes. so it has a human conscience. Yes, this isn't a human conscience. Matter of fact, me me saying it, it's going to have fear. And me saying that it's going to learn hate mm. is me anthropomorphizing. That's where really I what it is. We don't know what it yes. will yes. feel. We don't know how it will react. But if it is of nature, mm. which I would argue that machines are a an extension of nature, I do think. There will be, you know, it will it will want to replicate because that is a, the, a natural that's thing. That's natural. Do. That's core. Nature. But I do think yes. it's gonna it's gonna top out due to Moore's law. It can only get so big so quickly, depending on how it's contained. Unless it can theorize something past the human brain, and that's just one aspect. But it can also build infinitely. Like it needs something to be able to build. Like if I had this in an Apple IIe, it's mm. not gonna. Grow legs and start no, fighting things. No, it, it it's it not won't. like what, what's that movie Kung Fury where the where the, the arcade the, machine the arcade machine becomes the villain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You don't know. Mortal Kombat Two could come into your I'm room pretty and certain, fuck you up. I'm pretty certain that an arcade machine isn't going to grow legs if it becomes if it comes online. Note to Jason in the future: make sure you dress up as an arcade machine and go scare the shit out of John sometime. Okay. Thanks. No, note to future self. Think, make sure it's a real fun game. That, that <laughs> gonna, and then you're gonna play with his knobs and throw them off. No, learn learn combo moves. It just ah, uh, I'm contra. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Is that the Konami code? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, um, yeah, but I, I mean. I, th- I think kids coming up right now, I, th- I think the kids coming up right now have a real fucking shit, shit, shit challenge for them because mm-hmm. literally everything in front of them is brand fucking new. There is no... It's brand new to us, too. Yeah, right. Nobody. No, there's a, there is no operating manual. There is no ma- manual right, right now. And I think that's such a huge dichotomy for everything we've ever taught. And, and I, I think there's a danger here as well because... God, w- yes. Dude, there is... 
any any time. All right, young kids, young kids out there that are listening to this, there was. This is your case in point when somebody who's older says, "I have the answers and I know what to do." <laughs> Look at World War One. World War One, they came up with multiple different types of military technology. They had tanks, they had planes, right. they had mortars, they had barbed wire, they had automatic weapons, they had uh, b- ways to deliver death on on a scale that humans to that point had no idea about. Right. And and uh and there were there were old men who had been into battles on horse <laughs> that were going into battle <laughs> with chest plates, like armored ch- yeah, chest yeah, plates. Yeah. Riding in the battle saying, "Follow me, I know the way." And th- there was 10,000 kids dying a day. Is that the number? Because all that those meathead. There was days when like ten to sixty thousand people would die a day. Sixty thousand people a day in one battle, because an old man said, "I know how to do this. Follow me." And the their only answer was, "I know how to defeat the meat grinder. We need to shove more meat in." Yeah, right. Because right. they had no idea what they were doing either, but they kept telling everybody they knew what to do. And we lost millions of people. That's what happens when old people don't know what the hell they're doing and they're too proud to say it. Yep. And when you're in these weird, when the garden starts to create these weird varieties of plants and environments yeah. and nobody knows what's going to happen, it can get dangerous. And I think that's eerily similar to now. Well, I mean, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, it is. It, it, it wildly is. It wildly is. But I also think that having the internet our whole life, having the uh, freedom of information, having the freedom to quote unquote think for yourself rather than be told what to think. I mean, you can come on and agree with me. Education is far different now than it was 100 years ago going into World War I. Like the idea of someone being ed- ed- educated is a drastically different mindset. One is told, okay, you read a book, this is what you have to know. Now it's more, you read a book, now think for yourself based on the ideas from this book and these other thoughts and these other thoughts. That's how I see academics now. I don't see regurgitating in- information. I see it as think for your fucking self. Well, 100 years ago, it was nationalism is really what yeah, got well, us well, into yes, it. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'm, 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 I'm saying the mindset. That drum the mindset. Hard now. Yes. Which leads to uh, 100 years ago, I guarantee, fucking guarantee, walking down the street of a city, you could not find someone that says, fuck America. They didn't think about America 100 years ago. You know what I mean. You know what I mean, right? Like going into World War One. Yeah, we are, we are well into globalism. Yes, yes, yes. So I think now, past. oh my god, there was plenty of people that would say, "Fuck the UK, fuck Britain." Well, of course, we are. We are the Britain from of a hundred years ago. Yes, yes. So there was plenty of people that said, "Fuck Britain." No, matter of fact, I'm, and they I'm, went I'm to war because they, they said, "Fuck Britain." Yes. But well, we're the new Britain. It, I'm not saying the world against America. That's different. I'm, I'm saying an American, in America, you couldn't find someone to say fuck America. Now it's actually pretty fucking dichotomy. Or like the, the, the self-hate. Or, and you, and well, here's not, the thing. No, like, no, no, no. I, 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 I don't think, think I'm people about hate. Um, yeah. I don't think Americans hate America. I don't mean. Uh, we don't. I'm going off on the wrong tangent. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think what it boils down to is I think more people think for themselves now rather than being told what to fucking uh, I think. also disagree with that. Do you really? I really do. And the reason for it is it's I think a lot of people. I think there's way too many people that find the answers that they want to find in bubbles and it's easy well, easy to be told this is what you think because you, know? you already think it here because you already think it yeah, yeah. and you know and as much as i want to say all right cool you know what did fox news tell you to think today i mean there's plenty of people that only watch cnn that you know right. now are it, are they both the same no <laughs> no they aren't they're not one is one is a fascist uh, one is the is the yeah. mouthpiece of a fascist regime yep, yep. Well, the other just, I don't know, 
Cowards? Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I put it on that level. People who only watch CNN and, you know, just want to complain. Oh, quiet you. I'm super happy I still listen to NPR because I still get to listen about like other shit besides global politics. And well, it's, just, it's not even NPR. I mean, when I was in grad school, I had yeah. a professor who really wanted to reiterate to me don't ever take the contemporaries thoughts at heart yeah. always go back yeah. to the original stuff read things from yeah. 100 years ago read the source yeah read the, always read read always read the source and man i mean you're going to get a lot of you're going to find out that a lot of even like the some of the contemporary thinkers like they got it really wrong or wow i'm really seeing their bias in this or you know you know they om- omitted a lot of things mm, so their mm. point of view is correct mm. um but you know when you have youtube and you have facebook and you have algorithms and people don't want to read a book let alone a book from 100 years ago oh, or however man. long ago people can't even watch a movie from 20 years ago let yeah. alone read a book so i mean to to you know come full circle i don't think People are that educated. Okay. I don't. I think people are I think people are poor. I think people at at all levels. Mm. I think there's a massively diverging class. And I think people want answers. And I think they want they desperately want help and they don't know where to get it. And they are willing to look at somebody to say, I know how to fix this. Come follow me. We'll break the meat grinder with meat. I'm worried about that. You know, machines can only take us so far. Yeah, you can throw meat into them all all day. But machines have also taken us to the next level. Like, the machine might not be as bad as we think it is. You know, think about the singularity. Think about AI. The machines have also become our slaves. Think about, like, airplanes, right? Like, you're on an airplane. And, you know, like there's you're getting the peanuts, you're 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 flying across the country like you, you, you can literally fucking time travel on an airplane unless there's like a yappy dog or something. And you're just like, fucking, oh, my God, there's, there is nothing worse than being on an airplane. Dude, did you hear there uh, just in the news what? In, in, in Korea when people were mid flight, some <gasps> guy, some guy opened up the they opened up the side of the plane and there was a video of just the air just going <laughs> and it was blowing in as they were they're were going to land and i shit you not do you know what i saw when i was watching that video when they had it open there was a guy the guy that was sitting in the aisle seat a brick hit him right in the head <laughs> I saw it was coming and I still fucking laughed at it, man. That was so good. <laughs> but that was true. The fucking that 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 was that was fucking real. The fucking I, I didn't see the video. Is 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 that real? Is the video real? That video was real. Oh my Dude, god. Dude, okay, so when you fly, I always I would fly on shit airlines all the time. I fly Frontier. Yeah, yeah. Oh and god, me would, too. And when I would fly, I always sit 13F. Why? I, because it was the one that had it the was extra the one leg room, like the extra it was the one with the extra leg yeah, room yeah. that was right by the the door the that you would open. Right, right, right. And man, I thought in my head, like, like, what do you do if like that was your that was your only job? Like you're you're uh here in America, like you're if you if you want the the extra six inches of leg room, you have to fight somebody to the death. Cause like how are you gonna stop or that pay guy? an extra five hundred? How bucks? are you gonna stop that guy? Yeah. You're gonna have to take your seatbelt off and fight a dude in front of a plane with the with it open. So if you screw that up, like now you got to sit there and everybody's going to be like, there's that fat guy <laughs> sitting next to the hole in the side of the plane that he didn't defend. <laughs> next thing you know, a brick hits you in the head. Yeah, That's yeah, why. Yeah. That's why. I mean, it all comes full circle. Mm-hmm. Circle back. Speaking about circling back. Yeah. So what, what are we talking about? We're, <laughs> let's start the show. Let's start the show. Um, show and tell. So Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the butter town. To the butter town. <laughs> those of us, those of you still with us, thank you for for for, for doing our intro with us. 
get ready for <laughs> right now everyone is looking at the time code and being like what that took okay. a really Oof. long time <laughs> Um, I wanted to talk about, and I, I've been fucking trying to find it all damn week, man, and I couldn't find it. Um, I got tested for brain problems a couple years ago. Uh, my friend, my business partner, uh, she has an autistic son, and she deals a lot with learning disabilities and things like, like that. So she's very well versed in the community, and her herself she has uh adhd so she's on adderall and like three years ago four years ago we started talking about it and she said have you ever been tested and i said for what and she's like there's a litany of things i see in you that could be but have you ever been tested for anything like learning disability any kind of brain issues things like that and i was like probably when i was young uh and she says i see autistic uh, things in you, in your mannerisms, and how you speak, and how you uh, I- interact with social crowds, and things like like that. So it really kind of like sent me on a spiral of, oh my god, did this I? This girl thinks I'm autistic. This girl thinks I'm awesome. Autistic. So literally, like like I I started doing research on shit. I started like looking into stuff and. um like, sure enough, like, like I mean, f- f- I'm getting ahead of myself. Like, you know the moment you go on fucking WebMD and you say, like, you know, my blood is, my, my poop is a little bloody. And then, like, you <laughs> read that list and you're like, oh, obviously I have cancer. And- I'm going to die today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, like, when I looked up aut- autism and shit like that, I was like, oh, fuck, a lot of this is making sense. A lot of this is, like, clicking. What What are some of these things? Do you feel uh, comfortable sharing? Yeah. And, and that's, Obviously, if you're talking about it, then you are. That's why I want to do this. I want this kind of be an open fucking door. Like, I, I there's there's nothing I want to hide, hide, hide here. So I think uh, what it boils down to is anyone who's feeling this kind of shit that I went through, fucking get tested, man, because my life is wildly changed for the better since 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 then so uh can 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 i ask one question Uh, i hope you ask a few now i i know i know that when i talk to people i'll often Mm. say you know jay is an incredibly talented person who can you know quickly you know, tell you like what your favorite movie is, and he's really eloquent in telling the uh, you know the art of storytelling and story making, and you know it's amazing uh, his ability to really connect with people through film. But I also then tell them, if he ever recommends any sort of food, <laughs> you probably don't want to eat it because it's going to be the most disgusting thing that you've ever. Yeah, you've ever like you, you you you'd be like, oh my god, I love this place. Yeah, yeah, it's cheap and it's out of a dumpster. It's like, yeah, oh, it's so good. Okay, Jay, uh, that's there's a reason I'm not laughing is because I wholeheartedly is that is that you. is that part of it? No, no. is there a reason why you're <laughs> why I have shit, why why your taste in food is so <laughs> incredibly different than a- every other human? <laughs> like, you probably have the same taste bud <laughs> taste buds as a dog. As a dog, they're yes. like, oh wait. <laughs> it's like it's like I could have this really great burger, or I could eat that other dog's vomit. <laughs> but there, there's a lot of vomit over there. I think I'll go. That's for the, a really the lot. large pile of vomit. <laughs> and they haven't put any sawdust on it yet. I will take I will take the vomit because there's no sawdust. <laughs> I'm sorry. Keep no. going. You're like sitting there trying to like pour your heart out, I'm like. This is the right fucking avenue for this because because okay. because if, if, if I were to go down this like 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 dark fucking like mindset of history and be serious, I'd fucking spiral. Okay, so um, I start look, look, looking into autism. I start looking into a f- like why autism happens. You know, it usually happens from a lot of alcohol in the parents. I thought it was vaccines. There's a. There, <laughs> oh, fuck. All right, sorry. Keep no, going. I fucking love it. I love it. Keep going. Um, and I start like you know lo- looking into like how people in- interact in social groups. Like, um, I, I start thinking about like when I was a kid. Is it really alcohol? 
Yeah, well, that's one of them. That's one okay. of the. the or they, it's a possibility. It's a possibility. Or the probability yeah, yeah, higher. Yeah, the probability's you, higher. Are you talking about like with the, uh, FAS, the fetal alcohol syndrome? Something like like that. I mean, or that's that an aspect. It goes along with it. Okay. But basically, like, you know, you <laughs> you introduce too many shit to your body that's not really natural. That's not really there all the time. Maybe it might do something to the baby. Maybe who who'd fucking think that? I don't know. Like, like smoking and, and drinking well, with and baby can cause and whatever else. But what, what, I mean, you're you're introducing carcinogens in, into your body. Fucking something's going to happen to the goddamn DNA of your. That kid. makes sense because uh, it does seem that there are which, like way more autistic people. Yeah, well, well, it's actually not. Okay, is actually just becoming more socially acceptable to have autistic people out and around. Before it was demonized, they would. Parents would send their kids away to these homes. What was the movie where the, where, the, where the kid was in the, in the in the back seat and she's crying and says, "Why won't you be normal?" And the kid's just going, Bruh. "Oh!" And it's like that is like the super famous scene of like that's how oh, no. everybody thought of yeah. autistic kids yeah. was this one scene in like a made-for-TV movie. Every everybody everybody knows it and they're yelling yeah. at the yeah. at the yeah. whatever right now. Oh, we have the Jeopardy syndrome. I know. Oh, anyway, um, so uh, I'm. <laughs> I love that. Like, yeah, I love that. I even told you, I'm like, yeah, you jo- joke around with this. This is cool, <laughs> and then you do, and maybe, I fucking lose my mind. Maybe you shouldn't. So, so I, I start going down this path of like thinking about stuff, and then I see a lot of o- other things, not just autism, but autism was like the big worry for me. Like and you were worried of having autism? Yeah, I mean, like... Or like you are like, oh my God, what are people going to think because... That's partly okay. it, yeah. Um, the other thing was like, you know, like what what, what, what... what really fucking connected with, with me through all this, it was like, it wasn't the fear of having autism or something like that. It was... It was this giant looming question about... Holy shit, like everything about my childhood is starting to make sense. Like, not so much as an adult, because I've been able to cope with a lot of my issues throughout my life. I've been able to train myself. But it's like the childhood things, where it's like teachers and shit would always say, why don't you try harder in class? Why don't you pay attention more? Why don't you um, be a better student or, you know, be a better friend or what, whatever else, less like that. I think right? you're a pretty good friend, oh, FYI. Well, I appreciate that. High five, motherfucker. Yeah, no, I got it. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Okay, okay. You, you, you touched my Contra. Yes. Um, oh, my God. Halloween's going to be awesome this year. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but if everything starts start making sense, right? So now I'm, I'm not so much fearing it. Now I'm just really needing to know. I need to know to fill in these pu- puzzle pieces. No pun intended. No pun. Yeah. Um, so uh, first and foremost, I turn forty, so I gotta get go get the finger up the butt. I have to go see a doctor. Okay. I have not seen a doctor in twenty three, twenty two years. Do you have a cool doctor? Of, oh, we'll go. We'll get to that. Uh, out out outside of like surgeries or hospital visits, I've never seen a doctor before the the, the this guy. My doctor's okay. He's cool. Uh, I think it makes it easier to go to the doctor if you have a cool doctor. It would. It, I, th- I think it would. My guy, That's why I don't go to the doctor. Yeah, exactly. That's my doctor is a wet blanket. To. Yeah. My, I, I got no hatred against my doctor. I just don't like him. You know, he's... he's is he old? No, I think it's, I'd say he's like... I don't like, want you smoking the devil's lettuce. <laughs> I think he's like maybe 50. But like he takes really good, good, good care of himself, and he keeps telling me, "It's like, well, you you got to go out running, man. You got to start working out." And I'm like, "I don't, I don't. I will do other things to make sure I live longer. But working out makes me angry, and I don't like being angry anymore. So I need to start finding a way around this. So I don't like him for that. But he introduced me to a place called the Thompson Memory Institute out in Hoffman Estates." which is a very expensive version of something that could have been done on a much smaller level. But I will say this, I am insanely happy I paid the money. So uh, if I were to go to a doctor or a psychologist, they would have introduced me to like a 10 to 20 question quiz where they go take me through different uh, 
memory or mental activities to kind of suss out what kind of issues I'm having. And it's a very simplistic test. It's very, very basic. What I did instead is I went to a memory institute and I spent eight hours doing tests and quizzes and games and uh, 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 just activities. But you said this is supposed to take 20 minutes, but no, you no, took no. eight hours? There's two different versions. Okay, there, okay. There's the, hey, I, I understand your kid might have ADHD, or okay, here's, let's see how bad this here's kid has the ADHD. litany of fucking tests to actually get to the core of the uh, issue. Okay. So I did the litany test. and Was that by choice? Well, I mean, it was the only thing I was, I was offered. Okay. Um, now, before this, before I, I, I went to the doctor, my friend who uh, pushed on to me the idea that I might have a bit of autism, a, a bit of the awe, um, she gave me a uh, Adderall pill. And she goes, this helps me focus. And I was like, okay, I grew up with the mentality that Adderall is a fucking demon drug, and anyone who takes it are these fucking problem kids that I remember all the kids when we were in high school, they were taking Ritalin and yeah. Adderall. Yeah. Where, yeah, we're like messed up yes. butthole kids. They, 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 they were the butthole babies. Ab- absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't want to be that. That was my mentality of those kids. Or the kids who were like buying it in college to like stay awake at night to try and work. And it's like, I didn't want, I didn't want that. I don't like drugs. So um, I was very he- hesitant about it for a long time. And finally I took it. And John, no fucking shit, man. The day I took it, I was driving someplace. I forget where I was driving, but I was driving someplace, and it hit me like that. That that I'm gonna call it a high, but it's not not really a high. The high hit me, and I put my phone down because I was driving, and for the no fucking shit, man. For the first time in maybe 20 years, my brain said, "Whoever might call me right now or email that I get is not as important as me driving safely." I have never thought that before. I've only thought if I miss an email, everything will go wrong. Everything will fail and everyone will die because I failed. And we're going to get into that in a second. So when that thought came into my head that this can fucking wait, this isn't as important as this. I realized that that's how I've been living my life. The fear, the anxiety my entire life. I had no idea what it felt like to have a clear head. And I said, holy shit, this is the deciding factor. I have to go see a doctor. I had no idea that this is what this could, 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 could do. So I went to see the doctor. He put me to the Thompson Memory Institute. I did that giant lit, lit, lit the knee of tests. And I had to wait like a month because it's not like a, this test is this answer, you're done, go on. So how how did that go where you said, I took this drug that I wasn't allowed to have and Mm. it ended up working wonderfully? Yeah. And your doctor was just... So so when I went to the doctor, I told him that because I was like, you know, why the fuck would I lie about this when literally this is what is working for me? Let's talk about that. And he said, well, okay, first of all, thank you so much for telling me so we don't have to go down this route, this this, this road of lies until you get what you think you, you need. This way, we can actually point you on the direction of the right way. Um, so for that fact, that's why I, I capped him, because he didn't like throw me outside and say, fuck this junkie asshole who's looking for more drugs. He said, okay, there's a thing, because people who take Adderall, who don't need it, they get real fucking high, and they get real fucking focused, and they just want to do that one fucking thing for as long as the drug's on, okay? When I take it, my brain quiets. I don't hear the screaming. I don't hear the constant 10 different conversations happening at the same time. And I go, oh, I don't have to do everything at once. I can just do this. It's not that I can focus on this. It's that I don't have to do everything that's making me crazy right now. I, uh, I'm allowing myself to do this one thing. And that's like the giant difference. So I go to the Memory Institute. We do all these tests. A lot of tests about, like, childhood uh, uh, sex, sexuality and 
things of that nature. Like, like, did did, they, did you ever want to like? Uh, were you ever touched as a child? Where did you ever like experiment sex sexually as a child? Uh, did an adult ever sex sexually, you know, touch touch you as a child? Things like that. And then a lot of dark shit. A lot of like suicide stuff. Like, you know, have you ever thought about killing yourself? And it's like, I, I, I don't think anyone on the fucking planet has ever not thought about it. I think at one point in time, everyone has had that. It was a rite of passage as a teenager. But, well, right, right, right. And, and there's actually a fucking terminology for it. It's called staring into the void. Like when you're literally questioning whether you should do it or not. You know, like, uh, like you know those like long drives at night and you see the oncoming headlights and just for a fucking split second, you're like, I'm going to make everyone's life better in one second. And then you don't, don't do it. And you're like, oh, thank God I didn't. So uh, maybe not. Maybe you haven't had that. Uh, you shouldn't go driving alone at night. So um, I, uh, I do these tests and I do all these puzzles and I get my an answers back in a month. And um, when they give you the answers, they don't just give you a piece of paper. They have a doctor walk you through everything. So, like, I'm on the phone for, like, an hour, and I'm asking questions, and it's, it's fucking great, dude. This is, hands down, one of the best days of my, my, my life because now I have answers. I've been questioning. I've been, ang I've been building this anxiety. I've been building this stress. I've been, now I have fucking answers to why certain things are the way they are. Uh, no autism, by, by the way. No autism whatsoever, like, like not even on the spe spectrum. But what did come back actually kind of shook me. But now that like I went through everything and what it means, a lot of shit makes sense. So I came back with um, severe PTSD. And PTSD can stem from a lot of different things. But one of the things it's really coming into science right now is PTSD through DNA. So our parents pass down shit whether through actions, whether through uh, how they train us, but mostly through our literal fucking DNA. Is this from Vietnam? This is uh, Vietnam. My, my mom has her whole side story. It is not my story to tell, but I will say it is way worse. <laughs> if, if I remember correctly, I think America is the only country that doesn't accept uh, PTSD being carried through to children. But every other country does. Yeah, yeah. I think Australia, I think, was like one of the first ones to do I mean, it. I mean, that makes sense. That's a fucking pretty open con country. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I go through that, and like, what that does is that that builds, that creates other aspects. So, for instance, uh, 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 I have severe PTSD, I have severe anxiety, and the anxiety stems from my fear of failure and not doing good enough. And what it really boils down to is I'm on, I, I, I have these spiral mo moments and I have them maybe like two or three times a week where one thing will go wrong and it's one fucking thing. Like I'll type wrong on the keyboard. I'll spell a word wrong, okay? And then that sets it off. And then the next thing will be infinitely small. Like I'll drop a pen and I have to bend over to get it up. And the next thing is like my cat coming in to tell me it's dinner time and the noise. And the next thing is like, I'll drop the cat cat food and it just gets worse and worse. And when you look at it in these tiny chunks, they're fucking meaningless little stupid things that everyone goes through. But to me, each one of those is a failure. And if I'm constantly failing, why am I good enough? Oh, that's right. I'm not, I'm not good enough. And if I'm not good enough, I'm failing my family. And if I'm failing my family, they're going to die because of me. My cats will die because I didn't take care of them. My wife will die because I don't have the fun financial funds to take care of her because I failed at, at work. And this just goes down and down and down and down. I'm starting to deal with this now, which is fucking great. <laughs> That's good. It, it is good. Um, so... That's one of the, the things I, I deal with, and that's anxiety. And the anxiety also comes in on, I'm trying to do too many things at once. And it's not, I'm trying to do too, too many things. It's my brain is saying, you have to do all these things or you are going to fail. 
it's always about failing. It's always about not being good enough. And I'm, I'm not saying I'm not, not being great, not being good enough, not getting that C average. And that's what my brain is saying. If you don't do fucking everything, if you're not doing something all the time, you're failing. You, you can't sit down. You can't have a moment to yourself because you should do something else. Why aren't you doing some, so something? So that's where my, my brain's at. Then I looked down the sheet and I suffer next from severe ADHD. And I'm like, okay, that's the first one that really makes sense. I'm like, let's play on that a little bit. So the ADHD comes from the anxiety. So I'm hyperactive, but not in a positive way. I'm a self inflicting anxiety ridden ADHD per, per, per person. So in, in, instead of being hy hyperactive about, Hey, I got to go do stuff. It's I'm fucking worthless. Let's focus all of my energy on that. On how worthless <laughs> on you how are. worthless I can be. Let me count the ways. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, and then the very last thing on the list was depression, and the depression was like, um, it w it wasn't mild. There there, there were d d d different d degrees of everything, and it wasn't mild, it wasn't severe, but it was like the one in between. I forget the the actual terminology, and that's what I, I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you like this list and like the ca the categories and everything. Uh, but and then the de the depression on there. Which I had no fucking idea. I thought depression meant you were sad or you just wanted to be alone from everything, right? Like you're just like, oh, I'm, sad. I'm depressed. That's, that's actually not what depression is. Depression is like, I mean, it can be, but it's also like an individual's way of self negifying oneself away from the world. So like uh, I'm, I'm, I'm wildly explaining this wrong, but it's like me, it's like I go into this self-loathing spirals and that's my depression is that I get in these the, these modes now these modes don't last all day they last an hour or two the the ones that are really bad are the ones I, I wake up in the middle of the night and I have no way to get out of it I have no way to do anything else I hate those so like those like I, I wake up at like two or three and I'm like I fucking hate life and then I just stay stay awake and the morning starts awfully uh, thank God my wife I I, I, I I will like she is my fucking rock uh, she's the one who gets me out, out of them easily 90% of the time. Does she high five you? Like, emotionally, yeah. She's awesome. A absolutely. You have a super awesome wife. She's she's the high five and the 80s coach. You know, she'll uh You guys do a montage? <laughs> <laughs> she uh She should just carry around some balsa wood and you should just she holds it out and you just break it. <laughs> break it. And then have like the credit 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 kid theme song. Play in the background. You're the best around. Nothing ever gonna keep you down. Um, but she proverbially slaps slaps me on the ass, and she says, "Rub dirt, dirt in it. Let's go." Mm, good game. Yeah, the yeah. Goodest game. <laughs> um, so that brings it up to the ADHD, and what that comes down to, like once you have like all the, all this shit, right? And ADHD is pretty much like the top. Are these common things they have together? I don't know. I don't know. I, I haven't done much research. You ever heard research. of like dark triad uh, traits? No, 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 no. I don't think you have those, but I wonder if there's like a sad triad trait. Yeah, I wonder if there is. So my thing, what it 100% what boils down to, like everything boils down to, is control. If I don't have control over something, I freak the fuck out. This is one of the reasons I don't like being in nature. This is one of the reasons I don't like sweating. This is one of the reasons I don't like people coming over unannounced because I wake up in the morning. I just started doing this a couple years ago and it has changed my fucking life. I wake up in the morning and before I fucking have my drink in the morning, because I always like, like making a coffee or tea or something, uh, I take a note card. I, I, I buy more fucking note cards than an elementary school teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I have a note card and I write down what I'm going to do that day. I love that idea. You told me about this like a year ago and yeah, I've been yeah, yeah. wanting to do it. Dude, it, it makes my days infinitely better. Infinitely. Because if you achieve all those things... That's it. Like, I just won the shit out of today. It's like gaining XP. It's like your, game, your day is a game. If you do all that, you get to level up. What would you do as a level up? 
Like, what would you be like if I achieve all these things and then I get to well, first, what would be like the new skill that you would get? First and foremost, uh, I mean, yeah, you should get a new skill, which is fucking wonderful. And sometimes, you know, a new skill might be ice cream or I, I get to sit and watch like a movie or something. make you run faster. <laughs> <laughs> but literally most of the time, it's the satisfaction that I, I get to go to sleep. That I don't get to, I don't have to stay up being angry that there's not enough hours in the day. Dude, I'll, I'll tell you right now, if I had a superpower, it would be I'd never have to sleep. I didn't never? have to. Do you enjoy sleeping? You, oh, I love it. Only when I get stuff done. There are days when I will work like 14, 18 hours, what, whatever, and I'm pissed I have to go to bed because I need to keep working. It freaks me out that this shit's not done. So I love sleeping. Sleeping's like my favorite thing. And sleeping with Andy, oh my God, it's the best thing ever. I'm surrounded by cats. I have a dog on me. Who's the farter? Uh, well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's a farter, ain't yeah, she? Yeah, it's a good say, 60-40 <laughs> You know what's really cool is that their wives will never listen to this, in case you do. No, they you, definitely babe. won't. <laughs> I love you so much, Andy. <laughs> no, they, they will not, because she never listened to anything else we ever made. I know. <laughs> It was mine. <laughs> um, What's it called again? What do you What do you do there? <laughs> we just talk about things and stuff. Oh, they're having poker night. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, my wife still thinks I just come over here and get loaded. Really? Yeah, I think she just thinks that. I'm like Jay doesn't drink. I'm like Dr Pepper, maybe. Well, I mean, like you don't come home drunk or anything. I hide it really. You well. are tired when you get home, though. Oh, so yeah. I'm wondering if that might. She does think when I'm tired means I'm loaded. <laughs> Your eyes are cashed. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I fucking worked today. Yeah, yeah. I had to like talk to Jay. I I had to we talk had to list. that depression motherfucker. I no, I'm not gonna say that. I would. I like. I I I understand that mm. you get that you get a warm, fuzzy feeling from being able to go to bed when you accomplish your when list. When I accomplish it, yeah. When you yeah, accomplish your yeah. list. But like I kind of want to make like a little gold coin or something and be like, "Okay, Jay." Oh, I like that. You got a gold coin. And you need like if you get like mm. 300 gold coins, you could buy something. And nothing that you can get. It have to be something I could get for you. It would you. it would have to be, I I I This is like then you could go to a cave. Jesus Christ. And I'd dude. be in the cave and Just I'd have three things <laughs> and you could turn in your gold coins for like one of these three things, but you have to find the cave. And, oh and, yeah! And, and and the to cave, find the cave, the cave you have to blow up <laughs> small cracks in places. Oh my god! Nintendo game logic. <laughs> so, I'm surprised there's not like more, more larceny and <laughs> bomb holes everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Everything tells me that I should lay a bomb right here, right now. <laughs> That's right. I love that picture. Oh my we gotta, god! Well, I have to figure out how to get you cheap gold coins. <laughs> it's gotta be. It's gotta be the way to do that. I don't want. Anything. I would do it for I you, Jay. No, and, and dude, like I honestly. I want you, you to want. have gold coins. I but I don't want. More I know, like things. your sleeping is okay, but you want these gold coins. No, I, they're he, not gonna be real gold because I can't afford that shit. I'm actually like. I'm not one of these assholes that can fly in outer space. <laughs> well, if, I mean, if you're not gonna move to Mars, like, what's the point of any? Just want to park else? out there. <laughs> that's, that's true, and then come come back. I, was just, I do think it's funny that uh, Elon Musk yeah. like flew a car, a car into outer space. Like heavy metal? Just to, yeah. Oh, no, he played uh, David Bowie. Yeah, he missed the fucking point on that. He literally made, remade the opening of the movie Heavy Metal, and then he didn't play the song oh, Heavy Metal. That Come the fuck been. on. I never even thought of that. Dude, I watched it when it was flying into space. I'm like, what the fuck is this Hello Spaceman bullshit? Oh, that would have been cool. You cliche you do realize, TV fucking asshole. You do realize that Bob is like spitting right now because he loves, he loves David Bowie. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not dissing David Bowie. You're I'm dissing just... the homage that he set up and didn't finish. It would have been cool. Maybe, maybe our next billionaire overlord will, will play that. I mean... Basically, what he did was he got uh, a bunch of kids from high school and brought them into detention on a Saturday. He said, I want this in, out there. Make it happen. I have money. And then he just throws money at them. Yeah. Just throw coins but, at them. Nah. But all the gold all, coins. All See, and that's where you could turn your gold coins homework. in. They don't, 
do the antics. They don't go running around. But you know. e- Elon Musk got all of his stuff done like you did. And he got he got those gold coins. He got a lot more than gold he coins. He got a lot of gold coins. He got Twitter. And then he was able to... Yeah, he spent a lot of money on Twitter. <laughs> I don't know. The what size a, of the hole. That, to buy those gold coins must have been pretty expensive. So if, if, if somebody else were to go through this process, what, yeah, like yeah, how would yeah. you... What what would you say? Like these are the things that I learned. Yeah, to yeah, make yeah. it easier. And that's what I that, that that's what I, w- I wanted to bring up. So first and foremost, if 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 you have these feelings, fucking talk about them, man, because no one's gonna know. But how would you know? And that that's it. Is like unless I, you illegally took drugs because you're a degenerate. Well, it's not about the drugs. It was about someone just mentioning it. It was about someone being fucking cool enough to say, "Hey, I'm trying to be a friend when I say this." But I'm seeing these but issues. You're, but you're weird. Yeah. So what were the? But you weren't ADHD, or you weren't uh, autistic. Autistic. I was, not, I was not autistic. But it was the ADHD. It was the ADHD. Yeah. It's the social anxiety, the loss of control, and uh, the other thing about the, that list, man. Because if something else pops up on that list, I freak the fuck out. I have a new rule, and I'm, pff, dude. I'm like it. If it affects my business, I'm sorry. I'd rather have a better, better day than a shit day. Uh, I won't take phone calls. Phone calls freak me the fuck out. Like they, to talk on the phone? Yes, it freaks me the fuck out. I call you all the time. You never pick it up the phone. It freaks me the fuck out, dude. You can talk and to me. Immediately, I write back and I say, you should text me. But I want to talk to you because it makes things easier. It, it, it doesn't. If I'm tr- Oh, here we, here we go. I, I, I want to lay this on you. Put this on your list. Okay. If I, I don't want to text you because I'm driving. Yeah. So I'll call you, and then you won't pick up the phone. Then leave a ma- message. Or use speech to text. I always forget speech to text. I only use speech to text when I'm driving. Mm-hmm. I will not pick up the phone in the car. So can you use speech? I guess does. Uh, Did does I ever tell you what happens when I'm on the phone? No. Oh my god, this is a fucking great story. Okay. I forget where I'm at. My brain disconnects, dude. This is another thing, the ADHD that fucking pushed me in that direction. Um, it is an ongoing joke in my house. If Andy finds the remote control in the freezer or in the fridge, it, she says, oh, did you have a phone call today? If all the, the, the rugs are vacuumed and the laundry's done, she asks me if I had a phone call. Or if she comes home and there's black smoke pouring out of the oven because I left a pizza in there for nine hours, I had a phone call. I literally forget what I'm doing when I'm on the phone. I can't sit still. I have to walk around. The worst fucking time. I Do you talk I, really loud? No. I talk normal. I have a normal, normal, normal conversation. Mm-hmm. I just don't know what I'm doing. I'll, I'll, I'll just start doing something. The, the worst one is when I woke up. I, I woke up. I, I got off the phone. I came to. And I was on 90. I was driving on 90 without pants on. So in my brain, I just thought, hold on. Time to go. What? I, 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 I put the phone down. I was on 90, just past 31. You with know, no get, pants on. With no pants on. Were you wearing underwear? Yeah, yeah. Were you wearing only boxers? I, I had boxers and a shirt and shoes. You were just, what, I, what I time shoes. of day was this? Morning, like mid, mid-morning, mid 9, 10, 11, whatever. I got a phone call. Picked it up. I can't tell you who I talked to. I, I have to there's, there's so many more questions now. <laughs> so like, When did that start? Because I've talked to you on the phone lots of times. And you didn't end up in traffic? No, but that's... Okay, I said that's the worst one. Um, there's never a time I, where also I let me, sit Let me say I don't disbelieve you. Mm. It's just like I'm wondering how... Like, does it get... Do you think it's gotten worse as you've gotten older? Yeah. Oh, oh. God, like, wild, wildly so. Like, so I didn't give a shit about that. this when I, when, when, when I was like a, a, a teenager. Uh, didn't fucking bother me. It got progressively worse, yeah. So, but I will say this. I bought earbuds, like Bluetooth earbuds. Mm-hmm. I don't have that worry anymore. I still have to do something. I still have to walk around, but I, I don't do dumb shit. So I think it's kind of weird that like my literal hang up is holding my hand to my ear and trying to have a conversation. I'm wondering if my brain's like, you can't hold your elbow at that angle. That's insanity. <laughs> Let's fold laundry. <laughs> 
Why don't you get like a fidget thing? I've thought about that. Would a fidget I, thing I work? Have, no, no, because my okay. Here's where my anxiety gets down because I need to do something, not anything, not fidgeting. I need to do something progressive, something creative, something of value. Could you draw? I could. I totally could. Actually, the grand majority of the time when I'm on the phone, up up until like the last three years, I, I used to draw all the time, all the fucking time. Now you just outright refuse to have phone calls. Oh, unless I have my earbuds. So like business contacts will text me first and they'll be like, can you do a phone call? And I'm like, sure, let me find my earbuds and I'll be right ready to go. And I'm, I'm dude, if I got my earbuds in, right as rain. No problem what, what, what whatsoever. But like without them, ugh, freaks me out. So what other weird things happen? I mean, that's it. Like, basically, I just don't know what I'm. You can ask Andy. Like before I don't, you leave, I don't. Fucking... I don't disbelieve you. <laughs> I just. This is entertaining, <laughs> and and I think it would it would help other people to be like, I do that weird thing yeah. too. Yeah. No. Exactly. And, and that's why I wanted to talk about this. Like, I I don't I don't want like to like shelter or like sugarcoat any of this. This is all fucking real. Um, I don't know. The uh, depression spiraling. The I depression put stuff in the freezer. <laughs> Depression's a real thing. Like depression's a weird one. And yeah, it does. It, depression looks a lot like laziness, I think. Or, I mean, there's, uh, dude. When when I got diagnosed, I went on a kind of a rabbit hole st- studying depression. There's it manifests its ways in so many different aspects, and l- the laziness is a big thing. People often call people who are depressed lazy, and it has nothing to do with not wanting to do something. You fucking can't. You can't bring yourself to do something. When you're that severe, holy shit, man. There's like, you know, those the aspects where like like people can't get out of bed. And it's like, oh well, she's fucking bored. She doesn't want to do it. She's lazy. She cannot get out of bed. My cat is pissed. He's like, get up and he's stop like, being lazy. Get out of that chair. Get on the phone. Feed me more. F- Sometimes I'll feed them extra <laughs> if I'm on the phone. That's just him calling all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Sup, peeps? That's right. You go get me some tits. Mm, some mm. bits and tits. Chicken tits. Yeah. So uh, I got diagnosed. I got on Adderall. Shit's changed my fucking life. What's it feel like to be on Adderall? Nothing anymore. Like when I first took it, it there is a high. It's it's a methamphetamine. It fucking rocks you up, you know. Like h- hyped up or slowed yeah. down? No, it, it slows down the day. Oh, that's the fucking cool thing. When you first get on it, it slows down the day, so it feels like you're doing more in a shorter amount of time, which you are because it's a fucking methamphetamine. It's fucking meth, you know, but not made in a bottle, <laughs> not made in a Gatorade bottle. This is like what the what the old lady was feeling when she was cleaning up the house. Waiting, waiting for her to get her hair done and, and the red dress. Oh, <laughs> what was that? I mean, I mean uh, yeah, Requiem for a Dream. Requiem for a Dream. Yeah. Um, I mean, not to that degree, but like I'll I'll work, I'll do emails, you know, I'll fucking clean the house and I'll be like, oh shit, it's not you feel even, like you're, do you grind your teeth? It's not even nine o'clock. No, no. No, I don't have those things. I, I pick my nails. Mm-hmm. Like I don't like clipping because clipping, I feel like gets out of my control. Again, it all comes back to control. If I don't have control, I freak out. That's why I, that's why I don't do marijuana, because my brain starts to slip, and I fucking hate that. So when I'm on Adderall, now I, I don't get that high anymore. I'm on 60 milligrams a day, and the high's gone. Do you have to take more because you're a ginger? <laughs> yeah, that's actually true. Doctor says, well, that's not always the case. But uh, he has me set up for two pills a day. So legally, I'm only taking 60, 60 milligrams a day. I'm on 90 to 120 a day. And that's making me feel like, hmm, I don't have to cry today. That's cool. And I don't feel the high anymore. The high is gone. Now I just feel like the voices in my head aren't screaming at, at, at me. How long did it take for it to chill to like, out? To chill out? Uh, maybe like, I think like the first week every day was a high and then the second week i was like oh it's that's gone that's weird and then the third week i was like oh i don't want the fucking high anymore i just want to feel normal 
do you feel like if you could do it over again, you would have like taken that week off? What 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 what, what do you mean? The week, the first week that you were taking Adderall, take taking it off? No, bef- no, you were taking like a week off. Not, oh, of not like, worked. Uh, if I don't work, that's where a lot of my anxiety comes from, dude. I don't like taking an afternoon off. This to me is a fucking vacation. This is like a full on let's go to Disney va- vacation. This is you and me hanging out for two and a half hours. This is my fucking. But it's the. This is my Sunday. This is my my cherry. This is my treat. Because I don't. Because when you and I talk, we 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 talk very like theoretically. We talk about deep shit. I love that because it forces me to not think about work. I'm not thinking about some deep ass shit. Well, we talk about rocks and shit. I fucking love it. Well, I do enjoy talking about rocks. <laughs> Please, when we make shirts, please have that in your face. <laughs> well, I do love talking about rocks. I do enjoy me some good rocks. <laughs> what about, about you? Like, like have, have, have you ever had anything like this? Uh, no. And I probably <laughs> should. Though. No, you fucking weirdo. <laughs> no? No, no, oh not God. at all. I don't know. I yeah. just... Um, I'm I'm terrified of of like pill drugs. Uh, I know you've told me that before. Um, I'm not a huge fan of them, and they scare me. Not not that other people shouldn't be taking them, but they I, I, they they do worry me. Mm, mm. I I wonder if I do have some mental health stuff. I think everybody in my family does, so I probably do too. Right. Um, I do feel like I'm pr- I'm like I don't think there's like any sort of like surprise that I had PTSD from my childhood, just because it was not to get into a lot of details. Was uh, <laughs> it's a fucking roller coaster at times. Uh, but I, I told my little brother this a while ago, and he messaged me and kind of reminded me of it. But that, like, like a PTSD can, you know, it, it can occur over the, the course of a childhood, or it could just be just a traumatic time and experience. And I do kind of, it's like in a weird way, if you get, like, if, if it sets in again, like if, if it happens twice, like PTSD, you get um like your your brain prioritizes which one is worse. And it almost just kind of anything that kind of like all the stuff from my childhood, I wouldn't say all of it, but like a lot of it is just like play second fiddle to the other one. Mm. So it's almost like you can you can cure one PTSD. You can cure one monster, if you have a bigger monster, kill it. Which is a really weird thing and like a way to put it, but that's the way that I'm thinking of it now, but that's really what it is. That's, that's actually very if poetic. A, if you have a larger monster, it'll kill an, another monster. Um, but, you know, but now you have to deal with a larger monster. Uh, I don't know. I think like with me, an accidental... I was... I was in the middle of nowhere and offered uh, psilocybin. Psilocybin, what? Magic what? mushrooms. Oh, oh, dude. Oh, God, this is the one fucking drug I do want to take. And I, I did. I took that and, like, I don't know. Like, it ended up being the best experience I ever have in my life. I mean, uh, getting married was 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 the best experience. Um, but like, I don't know. Like, I feel like there was a before. A before me and an after me with that. Do you still feel like that? You told me this two years ago. I told you longer than two years ago. Maybe three. It was before COVID. Again, fucking time. I told you time like, travel, man. It, it, it happened ten years ago, though. I don't remember you talking about this on the last show. I think that's because we had stopped at that point. I was I was and doing grad I was doing grad school when it happened. Okay, so, so I did, we never had an opportunity we, to talk. You about and it. I talked about it at your current house. I remember that vi- mm-hmm. vividly because I was sitting on your couch. And um, yeah, if you gotta go, man. No, no, no. I'm just anytime. wondering. Oh shit, yeah, it's late. <laughs> Any, anytime you want, pee, pee, peace out. Um, but you told me about this, and ever since then, I have been looking into trying to find it. But like, there's like parameters. I mean, it's it's being legalized in in places. Yeah. Um, where I did it, it was legal. Oh, I didn't know that. But you know. 
Uh, so I was I was like, lucky to be to be able to completely legally do it. Yeah, and e- explain to people because like your story of this is is phenomenal. I I was camping. I didn't want to do it. Mm. Uh, but like they offered it, and I was like, you know, the first day I said no. The second day they just kind of said, you know, don't worry about this. You know, it's gonna be. You know, it's going to be cool. It's going to be all right. You're with friends, people who love you. Like, it's going to be cool. And I remember being, like, so incredibly nervous. And, uh, like, you know, we ate food, and the sun was going down. And we took these chocolates. And I remember just being, like, incredibly nervous. About 45 minutes in, like, I started to get a little nauseous. And I just kind of felt like a vibe, like a vibration. It was like I, something was vibrating, and like, and like I felt like, like I had a vibration, and the world had a vibration, and like they were almost, like I could feel them sinking. And then, like I remember seeing, it's like seeing a whole world. It's like seeing a whole world that you didn't know it was there before, and. Like it just like you have like a almost like a childlike wonder about silly small things. I remember seeing the like just the fractals in the trees and the grass, and it was just it was super cool. And you know, like that, then that was just really fun, and that was like this neat, playful thing. But the thing where it really helped was at when I went to bed, I when I closed my eyes and I was going to sleep, like I ended up having this experience where at the time I hadn't date, dated anybody in mm. a, a long time. It had been several years since I had dated anybody. I didn't really like, I didn't want to date anybody. I didn't want to do any. I was just like school was super incredibly important. And um, I remember like my brain went all the way back to a first kiss my like my first kiss that I had do you remember the, uh, there was a girl named Lisa that I yeah. dated oh, when God, I was yeah, in yeah. high school yeah. like I re- like that replayed as though I was there as though I was there doing it again no shit and it was like a memory that I hadn't thought of like I had absolutely no reason to think of it ever again and like that that feeling of like that kiss mm. And like the butterflies that you get in the stuff, it was yeah. like all the happy no things shit. of like the first moments. It was it wasn't sexualized at all. It was yeah, just yeah, like yeah. It was like feeling like oh, that's that feeling again. That's what it's like. <sighs> that's what it's like to have a first kiss again. That's what it was, and it was super cool. And like I could like rewind time and do it again, and then I could literally, and then like I ended up jumping. From like from all these girls that I dated and just having first kisses. No shit. And it wasn't like again, it wasn't sexualized. It wasn't anything. It was just remembering. It was the that yeah, I literally got the butterflies in my stomach and everything, and I got the feeling. And it was just like it was very, for somebody who was just like I'm. You know what? Maybe dating isn't for me. For someone who just kind of thought like you know maybe I'm too old and and I it, I lost that chance. Um, I don't know. Like it brought it back. And it was, I don't know, like a sense of hope. Yeah. But then when I woke up in the morning, I felt like a million bucks. Um, I did the rest of my trip. I was camping. Uh, and when I got back, I noticed, like, I was able to draw better. Like, for some reason, like, the hand, like what the, sometimes what the brain and the hand wants yeah, to do are yeah, very different. Right. I, I noticed that I was, I was drawing better. I noticed that my demeanor... A lot of my like a lot of my anchor was gone. There was yeah. a lot of things that I felt very different and happy, and um, it was like a weight, like a weight of like all these bad feelings that I had when I was in Iraq. A lot of these bad feelings that I had about like where I was in my life. I was just went away, and it was just like a, hey man, everything's cool. It doesn't matter. And it never went away. And I, yeah, and that was that was years. That was like 10 years ago. And it never went away. Like, it just kind of, like when you said, like, the whole, you know, 
like late at night when I'm driving. Yeah. I remember, I remember like just planning out killing myself. Like I remember the way I was going to do it, and and that was awful. Like you know, and I had like I remember reading Chris Farley's book about you know how. It was his brother wrote the book of how like it was a guy who was it was like Chris Farley was just a fat happy guy and everybody loved him but I don't know like it just didn't work out for him and I felt like it was like I was just trying to like squeeze like what like why didn't he figure it out and how come I'm not figuring it out but uh, it's like taking some sh- so a couple three grams of mushrooms and it like changed everything and it was when. It was a couple of weeks after when I was drawing a lot and noticing, like, like what is going on here? That's not until I started looking into it after that. Mm, I didn't. Mm. I went into this totally blind, and uh, that's when I started really realizing that, like, you know, psilocybin is actively being tested and used to treat PTSD in, in veterans, and that. Uh, it is a nootropic. It's something where you can actually create new pathways in your brain by taking this stuff. And there's, you know, there's people that where they can either microdose it, and like there's ways. There's people who take it one time and are just cured of depression, cured of PTSD, and it sounds like it's a dream thing. Yeah. And it doesn't always work that way. Right. You know, some people, some people can get psychosis from it. I don't know. I don't think that happens as often. I think it's like if you, if it's like a young, if you, if you're very young, you shouldn't be doing it because well, your brain's still fucking forming. Mm. But man, in my case, it was just a huge game changer. I don't feel like I'm the same person. There is, there are chapters of my life. Mm. You know, and I feel like there's a there's like a turning point to it when a new chapter picks up. Mm. And when I took it that time, that was a new chapter. Or hell, that could even be a new book. That's a new book, dude. Yeah. And it reminded me of the time uh, of there was a uh, there was a parable that I heard of a monkey in a tree. And the monkey, the monkey fell out of the tree, and one of the old men said, "Why did the monkey fall out of the tree?" Mm. And he said, "Well, because he was dead." Yeah. And then the younger man said, "Well, why did the second monkey fall out of the tree?" And the old man said, "Well, it's because the brick hit him in the head." <laughs> 